Good morning, everyone. Today we are going to be talking about Pentecost and the Holy Spirit. So Pentecost is a day that is recognized by Christians seven weeks after Easter. So today, May 31st, is seven weeks after Easter, and so today is Pentecost. Now, if you remember on Easter Sunday, we talked about the importance of Easter and that it was the day that Jesus rose from the dead so that he can come and share the good news that we would be forgiven for our sins and we would one day go and live in heaven with God and Jesus. So Jesus came and he shared the good news and he went and spread the word to everyone. But soon it was time for Jesus to go back to heaven with God. And that's where our story of Pentecost is going to pick up. So I'm going to share that with you this morning and share about what Pentecost is. So Jesus ascended into heaven to be with God, but promised we would always be connected to him and God. A few days later on Pentecost, his promise came true. A big gust of wind came and sent flames down that appeared over the disciples' heads. The flames were the Holy Spirit coming. The disciples began speaking in tongues, which is like another language, as they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Now the disciples could not see the Holy Spirit, but because they believed in Jesus, the Holy Spirit connected them to Christ. A crowd of people came and were confused and made fun of the disciples for speaking in a different language and speaking in tongues, but one of the disciples named Peter spoke to the crowd and shared the promises of Jesus. He explained that anyone who believed in Jesus Christ could receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peter told the crowd to ask for forgiveness of their sins, which we learned a few weeks ago are mistakes, and to choose to follow God and Jesus so that they too could receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit connects each of us and connects us to God and Jesus. We are all God's children and we are all connected through the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit came down on Pentecost and now we can't see the Holy Spirit. It's kind of like air, right? We can't see air, but we know it's all around us. So we can't see the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit came down and entered into the hearts of the disciples. And that's what connected them back to God and Jesus. And we all can have the Holy Spirit in our hearts as well so that we can be connected to God and Jesus and be all a part of God's family. But how do we get the Holy Spirit into our hearts? Well, the first way is that when we are babies, we are baptized and our parents ask for God and Jesus to be in our hearts and to protect us and that we would live and just follow God and Jesus. And so the Holy Spirit enters our hearts as we're babies and we're baptized and our parents choose to have us follow God and follow Jesus. But then as we get older, we can then make the decision to ask Jesus into our hearts and be connected through the Holy Spirit so that we can live our lives as God and Jesus teach us to through the Bible, just like last week we talked about how the Bible is the best direction. So when we follow God and Jesus and have the Holy Spirit in our heart, we're following the Bible and following those directions. And when we ask Jesus into our hearts, we receive the Holy Spirit, which connects us to God and Jesus. And even though we can't see it, it lives in our hearts so that we can always remember how much God loves us. So now the Holy Spirit is mentioned throughout the Bible in so many different ways. It's such an important part of our lives as Christians. And to be a Christian, it means that Christ is in us. So it means that we've asked Jesus into our hearts and we have that Holy Spirit living in our hearts so that we can always be connected to God and Jesus. And so the Holy Spirit's in the Bible so many times. And one of the places is in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And it talks about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And I'm not talking about the gifts that like Santa Claus brings on Christmas or that you get on your birthday. But these are special gifts or talents that we have so that we can fulfill God's calling in our lives. So for instance, I feel like God gave me the gift to be a teacher through the Holy Spirit and so that I can go and I can teach all about God's word and teach everyone about how much God loves them. And so I have that gift from the Holy Spirit. And so everyone has all sorts of different gifts, like doctors have the gift to help heal people. Other people have the gifts to become pastors so that they can also teach all about God and Jesus. So there's different gifts that we get from the Holy Spirit so that we can fill God's calling in our lives and do what God wants us to do. Another place that the Holy Spirit is mentioned is in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 through 23. And the Bible talks all about the fruit of the Spirit. And they remind us how we should live our lives and act as followers of Jesus and God. So again, it's like more directions in the Bible are in the fruit of the Spirit. And there's nine different ones that remind us of how we should act in our lives so that we could follow God and Jesus. And so those nine are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And so if you want to learn more about each of the fruits of the Spirit, we actually have a two-week lesson plan on our youth resource page that goes into each of the fruits of the Spirit more in depth. And then there's crafts and activities and songs you can dance to and 
different mission projects and things like that. So if you want to learn more about the Fruits of the Spirit specifically, you can look at that lesson plan on our website and you can use that and learn more about the Fruits of the Spirit and what each one of those means. Um, but today we're going to do a craft and just write the nine Fruits of the Spirit, but we're also going to be making a dove because a dove is a white bird that represents the Holy Spirit. It's a symbol of the Holy Spirit. So today's craft, we're going to make a dove out of a paper plate, and then we're going to add the nine fruits of the Spirit on there so that we can remember how God wants us to act and that when we have the Holy Spirit in our heart, that we should act with love and joy and kindness and all of those fruits of the Spirit. So let's go ahead and make that craft now. Today for our craft, we're going to need one paper plate, we're going to need the Fruits of the Spirit template, which can be printed off of our youth resource page, as well as the outline for the body of the dove. You'll need either colored pencils or crayons or markers, whatever you'd like to color with. You will need a black marker, a blue marker, and an orange marker. You'll need a pencil, some tape, a glue stick, scissors, and a piece of string that's about one and a half to two feet long. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my paper plate upside down and I'm going to take the outline of the body of the dove and I'm going to lay it down so that the bottom part is on the ridge of the paper plate to make the tail and then the top of the head should, top, should touch right about here. So I'm going to trace the body onto the paper plate now. So it should look just like that. So I have the body on, and now I'm gonna draw a straight line down on either side of the body to make the wings. So it'll look just like that. So I'll have the body in the middle, and then a line on either side to cut out the wings, and then I'm going to cut out the body, and I'm gonna cut along each line to make the wings. So now I have the body of the dove and I have my two wings and I'm going to just put my wings one on top of the other to make sure that they're the same exact size and if they're not, I'm just gonna take my scissors and trim them so that they are the same size. Just like that, so now I have my two wings. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my dove upside down and I'm going to tape the wings to the back so that they are flat like that. So when it's taped on, it will look just like that. So now it'll look just like that. So now I have the body and the wings of the dove. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my orange marker and I'm going to draw two feet right above the tail and then I'm going to draw an upside down triangle for the nose. Just like that. And then with my blue marker, I'm going to draw two dots for the eyes. And so now my dove has a face. And I'm going to use my black marker and I'm going to write fruit of the spirit on the body of the dove. So our dove will look just like that and I'm going to stick this off to the side. And I'm going to take my sheet that has all of my fruit of the spirit on it and then I'm going to use my colored pencils or you can use your crayons or your markers and you're going to color in each of the fruits. Then your fruits are all colored and then once your fruits are colored you're going to cut on the oval around each of the fruits and the words. You're going to cut around each oval and cut all nine of them out. And then once you are all done cutting them out, it's time to put them on to our dove. And since we have nine of them, I put four on one wing, one in the middle on the bottom on the tail, and then four on the other wing. 
So you can put them in any order, or if you look into the Bible, you can see the order they're in in the Bible verse. And so I'll just grab my glue stick, and I'm just going to glue each of these onto the dove. And so it'll look just like that. And the last thing you're going to do is you're going to flip your dove upside down and you're going to take your string and you're going to put it at the end of each of the wings and then you're going to tape it on. And then it'll look just like that. And then you can hang up your dove that have all of the fruit of the spirit on it so you can remember all of the fruit of the spirit. So now that the weather is getting nicer, I don't know about you, but I love getting to go outside or go in my pool and just enjoy the beautiful weather that's coming as summer gets closer. And so I have a fun game that you can play while you're outside or in your pool with your family. So you can keep learning about the fruit of the spirit and talking about the Bible, but you can also be outside and having fun with this game. And so what you'll need is you'll need a ball and you'll need a Sharpie marker. Now, before you write on the ball, make sure you ask an adult if you can write on the ball. So ask one of your parents or an adult if you are allowed to write on the ball, and then you can write on the ball. So don't grab a marker and a ball and write all over it, and then ask your parents. Make sure you ask them first if you can write on the ball, and then what you'll do is you're going to write the nine fruit of the spirit. So I have faithfulness, I have kindness, I have self-control, patience peace, gentleness, joy. So I have all nine of my fruit of the spirit on the ball. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go outside and you'll, you'll go outside with your ball and you're going to play catch with your family. And so you'll catch the ball. And then wherever your right thumb ends up, so my word was love, is going to be the word that you're going to use. And you're going to talk about how you can show love to others and how you can follow that fruit of the spirit. So I might say I would show love to others by reminding them how much God and Jesus loves them and that they are always there to protect them and watch out for them. So that was my word. So then you'll keep playing with your family and then each time you play catch, you'll see where your right thumb ends up and then you'll talk about how you can follow that fruit of the spirit and you can share love with others or how you can be joyful or how you can be kind or faithful. So you'll just, wherever your thumb lands, that'll be the word that you're going to use. And so it's a fun way to get outside and enjoy the nice weather while also learning about the Bible and learning more about the fruit of the spirit. And so this morning, before we pray, I just want to talk about how important it is to know about the Holy Spirit and to just know that we can always have the Holy Spirit in our hearts and that God and Jesus are always with us. And all we have to do is we just ask for forgiveness of our sins and God and Jesus are always there and they always forgive us and they will always be watching out for us. So this morning I want to pray with you and I just want to pray and ask Jesus into all of your hearts that you can have the Holy Spirit in your heart and know that God and Jesus are with you. So let's pray together this morning. Dear God, we ask you this morning to just have Jesus come into our hearts, God, so that we can have the Holy Spirit and be connected to you, God. Help us to just remember that you will, for, you will always forgive us, God, and that you will always love us, and that you will always look out for us, God. And help us to just know that when we have Jesus in our hearts, we are loved so much by you, and you are always with us. It's in your name we pray. Amen. And now before we go, I just want to um, ask parents for your help. I would love to start sharing pictures of what the kids are doing at home to just keep growing in their faith during this time. So if you have any pictures of your kids doing any of the crafts or games or science experiments from our children's message, or if you have pictures of them doing any of the lesson plans and the activities on our resource page or any of the different acti activities that we've, pro we've been providing, or if there are other ways that you've just been growing your faith as a family at home, we'd love it if you send pictures in of your kids and then we are going to add them to the end of our children's message each week and just spotlight a few ways that people are learning about God and Jesus at home. So if you send your pictures to um, our, my email address, which is youth at jackson.church, and then each week we'll just put a couple pictures in right at the end of the children's message just to share about how we are all growing in our faith and how the kids are growing in their faith during this time. So I would love it for, your, with, for some help with that and just send me those pictures and we would love to see your kids and just see how they're growing in their faith. So thank you and I will see you guys next week. Bye!